Out in the West Texas town of El Paso, I, I fell, fell in love, love with a Mexican girl. Um, Nighttime would find me in Rose's, Rose's cantina. cantina. Music would play and Felina, Felina would whirl. Old oh, hi. <laughs> And we're live. With Paranormal Dash Spirits, a place we come to get our booze on. We talk about the booze, the things that go bump in the night. And I get to do that with my booze. I'm Mike Black. To my left is my beautiful, talented, and delicious wife, Alyssa. Hello. Across from me, my sidekick, confidant, the lovely and talented, John Burkett. Buenas noches. Tonight we have a story. <laughs> Buenas noches. <laughs> Buenas noches. <laughs> So I think John's making <clears throat> or alluding to the fact that Alyssa's going to bring us a story about the old Southwestern General Hospital in El Paso, Texas. And we'll spare you the Marty Robbins rendition of that that we were all doing previously. <laughs> Cameras were rolling. <laughs> Cameras were rolling. Maybe we can take a clip of that and put it in there somewhere because that was pretty funny. <laughs> So people are like, who the hell is Marty Robbins? <laughs> right. All the younger. Well, our demographic, though, is old farts like us. Because I was looking at Wait, the who's the us? The us. Well, I was looking right at him when I said us. Okay, because I, I'm, I left I'm you the out third of that. wheel over here. <laughs> you're, <clears> not, <throat> you're not an old fart. You're a young fart. I'm the young third wheel over here. Yeah. So, but anyway, if, uh, if you're listening on a podcast, let me tell you about all the other places you can find us on the interwebs. Uh, you can go to YouTube and find us at 3B Paranormal Spirits. Spurts. Spurts. Uh, you can go uh, to Instagram. You can go to TikTok. You can go to X. X. And you can find us there at paranormal underscore D-A-S-H spelled out underscore spirits. And I'm going to put it right there. Can you see it, John? Still can't see it. Can Still you? can't see it. <laughs> it's going to be right there. He still can't see it. So that's in post-production. And then if uh, you go to our website, that's at paranormal-spirits.com. And then the dash isn't spelled out there. It's just a like that, you know. And a hyphen. Yeah, a hyphen. Hyphen dash. And if you go there, that's like a landing page. And you can get to all of the, uh, the sites that have us on it. And... You can also find uh, Boozy's Boutique there, which is our swag store. And you can pick up your cool Boozy's Koozie. It's got Boozy on one side, Boozy Koozie on the other. We've got some dad caps. We've got some coffee cups and coffee mugs and racerback tees and T-shirts with funny sayings and stuff that dads would wear. Let's talk about the booze that we're drinking. I am drinking... We. We. Beastie. They. Our big wee beastie, and it is an Isla malted, it's an Isla single malt, peated scotch. Five years old. It's very young. It's just a just a wee beastie. It's a wee beastie. And what are you drinking, Alyssa? Same thing. And John, what are you drinking? Hey, Cuatro Blanco tequila. Is that like G four? That's G four for. <laughs> oh, you drinking my G four? <laughs> so good. Well, now that it's available. It <laughs> right down the street. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Everybody will be there. <laughs> oh, tell them where. Go to <laughs> right. Go to Dallas. Go, go to, to your lo- go to your local uh, purveyor of spirits and spurts. see if I can pick you up some. Why do you say spurts like that? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I hear when you say it. John, do you hear spurts or <clears throat> you hear spirits? Mm. You can be, be honest. honest. Spurts. See <laughs> spurts. Okay, let me try. Th- let me see if I can be a little more country about. It. Go, you local purveyor of spirits. Spurts. 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 Take your wheelbarrow down there. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. And shovel you out. So, I have never had this before. What do you think, babe? Good stuff? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Blow your palate out, did it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's strong. It's strong. The peat is strong. And the... No, it, the peat's good, but it is... The ABV's high, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like 100... I think it's 100 proof. Maybe over no 100. Need. That Ooh, is good. It is good. I like that. Cold. It's got a bit of an aftertaste at the... Bit of an aftertaste. That Lagavulin doesn't have, but it's still very good. So, Alyssa, take it away. Tell us about the 
Old Southwestern General Hospital from El Paso, Texas. In El Paso. That's a Mm -hmm. mouthful. It is. Is there a new Southwestern General Hospital? No. No, just the old one. Well, there there's new hospitals know. there that they've. <clears throat> this is this is an old hospital. They didn't ever make a new Southwestern that I know of, but they do have newer. This one went on to. They built another one after this one, and it kind of it's never been empty. It's still not empty. I don't know. Mm-mm. Some floors are empty, but. I think it's just about all hospitals right now. Yeah, well, not Trans Allegheny, but. No, no they're that all one empty is there. straight up empty. Except for all well, the ghosts. Yeah, it's not <clears throat> Unless you count ghosts. Well, this is actually inhabited spurts. by mortals. Unless you count in spurts. Mortals <laughs> are actually here, too, still. Um, But it's one of the most haunted places. Apparently, El Paso has quite a few haunted locations. With a couple of theaters, houses. But this is one, one of the hospitals. It's all the wily cowboys that got shot there because they were chasing raven-haired... Felina. Felinas. There's actually lots of stories about like saloons and bars that have, you know, Billy the Kid, I think, was said to be in one of them. Oh, of course he was. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Kind of like Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. Of course he was. At the haunted they border were. crossing. Yeah. Uh, but one reason why El Paso has so many old hospitals or as they used to be called sanatoriums or SANS for short was because... Healthcare in El Paso in the early 1900s was focused on treating and curing tuberculosis. Ah, uh, the old consumption. The old consumption. So they, due to its dry air and sunshine, which were, it was thought that you could recover faster from TB with dry air, lots of sunshine and rest. And they said that El Paso was ideal for this. Well, Southwestern United States in general. A lot of people came to El Paso. It ended up with a lot of sanatoriums due to it being dubbed the ideal place for recovery. Doctors and other clinical people came to El Paso having TB themselves and then stayed to continue to help people. So they just kind of stayed to live here. Albert Baldwin Sanatorium was one of the first, and it was built by David Gilmore Baldwin in 1903. David Gilmore? Mm-hmm. From Pink Floyd? No. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. No. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the people, David Gilmore Baldwin was one of the people that came, he came from New York, New Orleans, excuse me, New Orleans. He was a postmaster in New Orleans. He contracted TB, and he was looking for a sun cure, mm. is what he called it. Um, I'm not sure where he got his money, but he bought this site. Yeah, I was fixing to say, I mean, how much does a postmaster get paid? I don't know. I never really figured out how he got his money, but he bought the site and built what was originally named the Albert Baldwin Health Resort, and it, he named it after his father. The first patient was admitted in 1907, and the first medical director that was there resigned in 1909 to go start the first TB clinic in El Paso and founded another sanatorium. So... This is how the old Southwestern General Hospital was not built at this time. This was the first sanatorium. So Baldwin attempted to lease the building, the original building, and then he leased it to Dr. Robert Horman and Morton McKinney and was later joined by Dr. John Crimen, Crimen, who was actually a dentist. So they decided that due to the influx of patients, they needed a bigger area. So, a bigger building. So, in 1924, the new building was built at the corner of Cotton and Erie Street. Go figure. It's Or maybe it's Erie. It's E-R-I-E. I I don't know. That's Erie. I I guess it'd be Erie. Technically, Erie Erie has two E's, right? Erie, Pennsylvania is E-R-I-E-I. I I I thought it was E-E. Well, I don't know. I don't either. Lake Erie, maybe it's just (laughs) What about the canal? I don't know. The construction was started May 1924 by architect Otto Thorman. The New Horman Sanatorium Southwestern Hospital was the name, and it was dubbed the Place of a Thousand Windows. Mm. Now, is this because it had a shallow V? <laughs> it did not. It <laughs> was not like Kirkbride. Oh, no, okay. it was checking. not like Kirkbride, <laughs> but very similar. I mean, the idea of open air mm-hmm. and I mean, granted, that was for mental patients, but yeah. um, I will tell you, 
so before this was built, though, the original sanatorium, I thought this was kind of interesting. In a magazine, they had an ad for it. The, the TB sanatorium, they had an ad in a magazine. There was a capacity of 75 people, and the rates were 25 to $35 per week. A lot of money back then. Pay to stay in the hospital. <laughs> so. Well, you pay now to stay in the hospital. Sure do. That was racket like, of insurance. That was like the price <clears throat> of a hotel in South Dallas when I was a kid. <laughs> What kind of hotels you getting? Oh, I said South Dallas. <laughs> you can still stay at a like a Days Inn or a Motel Six for not much more than that. Twenty five bucks a night. That's no, well, a little, a little bit forty, fifty. <laughs> yeah. So the heyday of the old Southwestern General Hospital, nineteen twenty five to nineteen thirty. That's when it was the place of a thousand windows, had a hundred and four private rooms, and three floors for beds, two elevators, one could hold a bed. But you have to remember. When you're talking about like 1925, elevators are new. And of course, you and can deadly. imagine what is to come in the future of yep. when I tell you about ghost stories. Oh, wow. Somebody <laughs> got beheaded at that elevator. Yeah, somebody stuck their head out of an elevator mm. and it got chopped off. Yes. So there are four floors, technically three bo- floors for beds. And the fourth floor had an assembly room or what we could call a conference room or a day area. Oh, uh, th- where they so, would assemble. Yes, assemble. Okay, yes. That makes sense. And it had a roof garden. So you, this area was used for sunbathing, radio concerts, movies, and other entertainment. Sociability was encouraged, and hot meals were sent to the fourth floor while people were socializing. I guess is what they want to call. Sounds it. Sounds luxurious. A place of a thousand windows that had no drapes. There were no drapes anywhere in the hospital to allow for the maximum amount of sunshine. But it was said that. None of the lights shined in any patient's eyes the way that they had placed the lights that you couldn't have lights in your eyes. So you really? had the windows facing north south. Oh, that, yeah. Probably. Yeah, that would work. <clears throat> they said that when they built this new hospital, it was said to be pleasant and home like with soft colors instead of white being used. White was only used nice. in the bathrooms. On the first floor, it was Cafe Ole colored. What's that brown? Is that brown? Yeah. Oh, okay. The second floor was French gray. French gray. I I don't know what the third floor was. They never said. Interesting. Yeah. So 1925 to 1935 is when it was, I said 1930 earlier, but it really, for the TB part of it, it through the 1935, but then advancement in medicine, the Great Depression, the need for all the sanatoriums waned. And so it needed to become so what they they made it a general hospital in gotcha. 1936 that required remodeling though because it didn't have any surgical areas it didn't have any x-ray areas it was just for tb the consumption so remodeling was done to include an x-ray room with lead lined walls couldn't do that anymore no <laughs> war it had wards now instead of just rooms with beds they made like actual wards like what you would see in a hospital mm, nowadays mm-hmm. An office was on the first floor, operating and recovery rooms on the second floor. Third floor was OB and nursery. New luminaire lights were installed, later known as fluorescents. Oh, I was going to say, what's a luminaire? Yep. <clears throat> and there were 150 new posture beds that could raise and lower the head and foot with a crank. Sleep numbers. <laughs> old, old, old school. I don't think it was that cool. With a crank. <laughs> like, cool crank. What's your number? 35. <laughs> Just crank you up there to 35. That means turn turn that wheel 35 times. It opened uh, January 30th in 1937. So it operated as a general hospital at that point. It was renovated again in 1974. Received new elevators, electric beds, TVs, and phones in each room. 25 rooms total were remodeled. They established an ICU, a medical floor, and then the OB floor moved to the fourth floor that has the open air space. Um, they also where they did the assemblies. Yeah, for yeah. the assembling places. Yes. Yeah, I was listening. New fire escapes were installed. Um, there were. Where did I? So the hospital changed hands many times. In 1986, it um it changed hands. At, that was one of the first times I read that it actually changed hands from a, from some of its original family owners, and then in 1988, due to bankruptcy. It closed down except as an ER clinic. So it just, it was open for just as a clinic. 
And then in 1995, there was a limited partnership that bought it out. And then in 2005, it was purchased again and remodeled. And it is operating now called the El Paso LTAC or a long-term acute oh. care mm-hmm. um, and also rehab. So it's a rehabilitation hospital. So it's like LTAC and rehab over it. Essentially, the yeah. Place where the whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We call it LTAC, yeah. They do allow for ghost tours still. In the hospital? In the hospital. And I think that's because that the third so floors, third and fourth floors are closed. They mm-hmm. only use, I believe, the bottom floor, maybe the second floor. That would make for sense. For the LTAC. They said that they're still in the, the plan is to remodel it with a multi-million dollar plan to remodel was what I read from 2011, 2011. Maybe it was 2021. We're going to send you to LTAC, which is long-term to, care. To the haunted LTAC. Yeah, to the LTAC. Now, if you get bored and just don't want to hang around in your room, you just go take a tour of the hospital because it's haunted. That's well, strange to me. How do they do that? Well, I'm not sure because it says like in 2016, I went on a ghost tour. Like, so I, I couldn't really figure out how you can do it. The Paranormal Group of El Paso, like Paranormal El Paso, I think is what mm-hmm. it's called. They have done a, a thing here. There's been a couple of other paranormal groups out of El Paso, maybe some other places too, mm-hmm. that have done walkthroughs. You so, could yeah. have areas that are just off limits because of HIPAA. You could, yeah, I mean, you couldn't have it in that. Although you were the patients, you could take but, a ghost tour down at main campus if you just walk around by yourself. I mean, nobody's yeah. gonna well, stop you. Well, like I said, there's it's it's empty. The third and fourth floors are empty. There's still beds there. People were talking about how it's still dusty. There are nurses' notes laying on some of, like, uh, on the, the nurses' stations. Like, yeah. it's like they just up and left. And I'm assuming, like, how you would be, like, in the stairwells, maybe, and then the floors that are being used are locked, so you couldn't, like, get right. to them, you know? Um, I could see if they kept it separated like that, you know, you, then could, you could do that. You could do it on a floor because you wouldn't be exposed to any patients or anything like that. But it was quite interesting reading this because I've done most of the things I've done. They've been closed for years, mm-hmm. decades, you know, like mineral wells, for instance, the mm-hmm. Crescent's not closed, but it's not a hospital. It's right. a hotel. So the reports, of these people like 1980s people, you know, my age, they're like, I was born there. Oh, wow. And then my dad had a hernia surgery and it's like, that's so weird because it's uh, most of places. Well, there, were, there were people at that ho- the hospital in Mineral Wells that would be, uh, you know, in our general age range that were born there. I mean, it, it operated that recently. Yeah, that's true because it, it was an operation when my grandfather was like in in high school. He's born in the 30s. Mm-hmm. And so it would have been still an operation in the 60s. So that makes sense. Yeah. But still, to see it even in the 80s and the 90s, because yeah. there, there are people still, I mean, they're not giving birth here anymore, but not in the LTAC, but, um, but so some of the stories, so there's a said to be a ghost nurse who changes bed sheets. That's very nice of her. Isn't it? I know. I'd say it's a mom labor cause. <laughs> and she walks the halls in the hospital's empty fourth floor. It's probably violating some labor code because, <laughs> because she's working without getting paid. <laughs> There's a psychic who has sensed the spirits of a woman and a man who have died in the elevator. I'll get to that in a minute. In 1938, 21 year old Jan, 28 year old janitor fell off of a stepladder, hit his head on a sink, Bonk. and later died at the hospital. He is said to be Charlie, who is a ghost that is so there's two stories charlie died in the elevator charlie died by falling off the sink regardless he will bring you to the fourth floor which is not in use or he'll bring you to the basement this person said my grandmother was there for a month i would go every day and see if this was true i'd ask him to take me to the fourth floor how would he take you well she'd get on the elevator the night my grandmother passed away when we were leaving i pushed the first floor button and suddenly the elevator went up to the fourth floor and just opened with no one there i know it was charlie that's the only explanation or Otis hadn't been around to uh, work on the elevator in a while, <laughs> or Tyson Krupp or whoever built it. That's true. the the other The other legend is that Charlie is um, a maintenance worker that died in the elevator after an accident. They say he's still riding the elevator today. There, um, somebody there. Were, I saw that like on one of the websites I was on. Said my mom told me she was working for this hospital in the early 1950s. She saw a man stick his head out of the elevator as the door was closing. It closed on his head and started moving. She saw it rip his head off as it went up. Nice. There were no safety measures on elevators back then. She was yeah, terrified no. and quit. 
she <laughs> she was later hired at another hospital. Mm. So, so as recent as the 1950s. So you know when you think about an elevator though. So I've seen spirits uh, in different places in hallways across a, an open field. You know things like that. But can you imagine being cooped up in an elevator and you turn around and look and there, there's somebody standing next to you that you can see through? Dude, that would freak like me out. The uh, Adolphus. They say that the Adolphus, that's what happens. People are standing next to him. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. You're right. Mm hmm. Um, one of the other elevator accidents. A respiratory therapist got tired of waiting for the public elevators. So they went to the staff elevators. This is the 1970s. Mm -hmm. She became pinned between two floors. Mm. If the elevator just stopped? Yeah, yes. So somehow, pinned. so somehow she, they said that she was waiting and then she became pinned between two floors like she had stuck her head out or something. Mm -hmm. And the way that the doors had opened somehow, anyway, it ended up, I believe, severing her in half. That's what happened. That's why if I'm stuck like that, the door is even open. I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm. I, nope. Mm -mm. I ain't coming out. Just wait until the fire department gets this thing all the way down. <laughs> I have. Well, ain't I've getting heard, cut in half. We've done too many podcasts with haunted elevators and elevator operators and things like that. And I've seen it in I've the seen movies. Too many, too many movies. Yep. So go yeah, ahead. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to. Uh, mm -mm. I know how that story ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the staff has reported hearing her screams in the employee elevators but you can still hear her screams sometimes disembodied screams um, one hospital legend involves a nurse who mysteriously died while working at the hospital in the 1950s allegedly she was murdered by a doctor she was having an affair with she still roams the hallways today perhaps in search of her murderer and seeking revenge well she sh shouldn't have threatened to to rat him out she should have just kept her mouth shut and she'd been okay well you know? there you go um, in 1961, a man fell or jumped from a window, and the family filed suit for negligence. So he said to still possibly be one of the spirits that haunts it. There's a girl in the 1920s that took poison right out, poisoned herself right outside the hospital, and so she's said to possibly be one of the spirits that still haunts it. Um, mm. Another story somebody said was, um, I worked the graveyard shift in a laboratory from 1995 to 1998. Um, I never witnessed a spirit. However, the top floor and roof were not readily accessible. I was told two suicides, jumper and poison, walked the halls. Um, mm. And then an elevator malfunction victim also walked the halls. Someone else said, I worked there from 93 to 94, had multiple experiences with elevator doors opening on their own, pushed the fourth floor, and the elevator took me down to the basement. Call lights going on with no patients on the floor. And then... This one said, one time I was going down, I was going around town with friends looking at haunted places. We came here and went to the back area to see the fourth floor a little closer. What we saw on the stairs was the legend of the La Lecusa and it is customary to cuss at the owl in Spanish. Apparently, every time my friend would do it, we heard a laughing, cackling noise when no one was behind us. But where's the owl? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. They were talking about how it came up behind them when they were looking at the fourth floor and apparently the La Lecusa is, has it to do with like a Spanish owl that can be you might want to i don't know what it said we heard a laughing cackling noise when no one was behind us i read that la lacusa does just that the cackling noise we plan on going there again the witch owl mm. lilith i don't know i'd never heard of that before so lilith is the the Legend of La Lacusa is one that can be heard all over Mexico. It is said that a Lacusa or owl is uh, specifically a white owl, is a bruja, and is taken the form of this owl. There are small owls believed to be witches, but the legend of La Lacusa is one giant owl. Some say it is a white owl, but there are other reports it is a black owl. Seven feet tall with a wingspan of 15 feet. So they're saying that they saw this on the stairs when they were going to the back to the fourth floor. Ew, said to have the face of an old woman. I would crap my pants. And this says it's, and it's customary to cuss at the owl in Spanish. And every time their friend cussed at the owl in Spanish, it made a, they heard a laughing cackling noise. Oh, And here, no one was there. It says uh, it's been reported in Chihuahua, Coahuila, Durango, Nuevo León, Tamaulipas, and in the uh, Rio Grande Valley of Texas and California, especially Southern California, but. 
Hmm. Was killed by a drunk. Oh, this is an interesting. You know, anyway, there you go. Never somebody else. Somebody else said, "I witnessed shadows, disembodied voices, screams, and one time I heard a female humming a song, only to find that room empty and dark. Videos of doors opening on their own with no wind or people in the building. Also, the third floor had employees that would see things and hear things. Patients also complained of a kid running in their room or a man standing over their bed, just looking at them, only to disappear. EVPs included a little boy saying, "Play with me, please." and a woman with a southern accent responding to questions. The woman is said to be a nurse seen on the fourth floor by security guards. She is said to be seen in, uh, seen dressed in old-time nurse attire. Oh, wow. Um, so, and it said, <laughs> it's likely that there's various spirits of former patients as this building has been connected to public health for over 100 years, subjecting it to countless deaths. So... That is my basic overview of the old Southwestern General Hospital. It's pretty much all that I found about it. So I think it's interesting, the kid, you know, when I was working at that psych hospital I used to work at, and we had the patient that saw the kid run into her room. Well, actually two patients Mm -hmm. that saw the kid run into her room, and several of the nurses saw a child spirit Mm -hmm. walking around the hospital. So patients, that one that was unpacking that lady's yeah yep. suitcase. Yeah, ran into her room and threw her stuff everywhere. And then because he had and the and I had two of them that were screaming from different ends of the hall. One of them said the kid had run out of her room, and the other one said he ran into her room. And they didn't know each other or anything. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And that hospital had been many things before. It wasn't just a mental hospital. Mm-hmm. It had been hospice. Yeah. It had been other things, so... And, like, this one, I mean, you can only imagine what it's seen. I mean, it, tuberculosis to start, and that was... The, it It affected everybody, every age range. At one point, they treated a lot of polio patients mm-hmm. with different types of polio, like, stretching and other kinds of ways that yeah. they were trying to improve on polio um, or, you know, treat it. Um, and then it became a general hospital, so then you have deaths with that. That was one of my favorite... Uh, stories. Me and my grandpa we enjoy General Hospital. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's the hell story are you talking about? Luke, Luke and Laura. Remember we Luke used, and Laura? We used to watch General Hospital. <laughs> yeah. General Hospital, One Life to Live. That was our story. Oh, oh that, those are ridiculous. I'm, I watch Loving. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Young and the Restless, honestly. But, and then of course, we always, there's elevators. Always somebody's dying always on the damn the elevators. elevators. Like, yeah. It's amazing we still, I mean, obviously I know why we use them, we're lazy, but, and it, it makes it easy when you have really, really high stories, but especially in hospitals, most people can't go up and down the stairs, right. but. And how do you get a, a gurney or a hospital bed at your, you know, those transport beds, how do you get those up and down the yeah. stairs? You have to use that. And which was cool because, you know, in 1925 when, when they built the new one, it was built with hosp- with an elevator to fit a bed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that would have been a new thing for them, elevators yeah. in general. So. They'll kill you. <laughs> they will shut your head in well, it. Thank God the safety standards have improved, you know, for elevators over the years. But back then, that you know, that was probably a a pretty a common occurrence, you know, for uh, a malfunctioning elevator or something, you know. And I'm assuming that there's not a lot of like your big paranormal names going to this one because it is still open. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna have you're gonna be limited on who's going to let you in and then they're trying to do renovations and make it this big grand thing again so anybody that's been there you know and either worked there or took a a haunted tour there or something like that leave something in the comments down below and and let us know and while you're leaving those comments make sure you click the like and subscribe (laughs) buttons that are right right over there and uh but i can say that you know even though there weren't a lot of specifics necessarily Mm mm-hmm like we've seen with some of our other ones, other than like Charlie and yeah. then the woman that changes the, the the nurse that changes the bed sheets. Um, everybody said that place is haunted. Well, I get the creeps walking into it. Like it, you can just tell, like that, you know, this place has some stuff going down and it, and it sits up on a hill. So it overlooks the town It mm-hmm. overlooks El Paso where it's at. Almost kind of like you're in the town. You look up at it. Yeah. And it's, um, Kind of like a trifold, the way it is laid out. I've probably, I've probably seen it. Like a shallow Not, V. A, a little bit like a shallow V, but going the other way. 
like a trifold, <laughs> like if you were, you know, presenting. I've and probably, so I've probably seen it. Can you see it from my tent if you're going? I'm not sure. Probably. I mean, it's they said it's up on a hill and that it overlooks the town. Probably can. Does probably. I can go? I, it's been. I, I don't know that I've ever been. Yeah, that's the way you're coming back from California through once you hit get out of. Uh, Do you, does I can go through El Paso or yeah. the rim? It goes through. Goes through. Yeah, you're about about. You probably can see it then. Thousand yards if you're coming back west. It, it says the building east. alone exudes an ominous presence, sitting atop the corner at Cotton and Murchison mm. in a menacing way, looking down upon the city. I looked at some pictures of it when you told me what you were going to do, and it it. It made me think of House of Usher, you know, when you hear about, when you read the story, you know, mm-hmm. Edgar Allan Poe and this, this foreboding, just, it becomes a, it becomes a beast itself and it stands up on a hill looking down, you know. Well, it's kind of like how they say about, you know, Mineral Wells. I mean, uh, the Baker Hotel and, and Mineral Wells, it, it's so big. Mm-hmm. It's huge. Mineral Wells, right? It's huge. It looks like uh, Trans-Allegheny. Can you imagine oh, rolling gosh. up onto that thing? Hey. No. And it just, it goes forever no. out there. I wonder if you can see it. Um, yeah, Tan runs right through the building. When you're coming back from California, mm-hmm. you've got, uh, it's not even, maybe 500 yards on the right at some points, you've got Mexico. You can see the fence, the wall, and the, and the, yeah. And the, it was so funny. <gasps> we were coming back one time at, uh, and uh, Taryn's like, why does it look so crappy over there? But it looks so nice over here on this. It's like, because that's Mexico. You see that See that fence? <laughs> You're like, that's Mexico. Oh this is Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but it goes up. Like, if you're looking left, north, and you see, like, the hills go looking down into town. Yeah, because, I mean, the hills are behind it. So, you can see the hills and so. really cool. Like, so, and, you know, there's parts of it that. Just kind of look almost like some of the hospitals here. So was that where Marty Robbins was standing when he? <laughs> Listen, in Felina World, I'm not the sure. Heels overlooking El Paso, so maybe he was looking down that way. But there's some aspects of it that you can tell are old, like that's been there a long mm-hmm. time. But then there's you can tell that they've made, they've made like a portico and they've done some different things to it. So, um, but there's talks about millions of dollar renovations to this yeah. at some point, but there are multiple hospitals in El Paso. So because of the sanatoriums, so they yeah. have been, obviously they're not, they don't need sanatoriums anymore, but hopefully never again. But Well, is it some place you would want to visit? I think I would. Think of the Mexican food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you got to go to El Paso to. You know, El Paso is nice. El Paso supposedly has some really. It's hot. It's hot. I'm it's it's, one, you it, like it's it. one of the top safest cities in the country. Actually, ironically, seeing how you can throw you know I, you can throw a football <laughs> into Juarez. <laughs> I actually read that somewhere. I find it hard to one believe. of the most dangerous cities in North America is on yeah. the other side of that fence. But El Paso crime rate's not bad at all. It's actually pretty. I, know, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of cartel activity going on, but they they don't. They keep it on. They the don't fuck around. They don't. Yeah, they don't make waves on this side. They keep it on the down low. It was ranked the 15th best city due to its excellent safety scores in 2019. Yeah. El Paso was ah. recognized as one of the top 10 safest cities. But you can watch the gunfights. Oh, I was from on say, top I of the hill in, in Juarez, like right there. So, so it's we literally like your El Paso fence Juarez. So I'm just it's, curious since we're talking Laredo's about Laredo's number seven, yeah. and it's over there too. So. I'm just curious, since we live in East Texas, what is Shreveport? Oh, <laughs> oh God. I bet it is down there. I mean, New Orleans is probably worse. Shreveport's pretty bad. They, I think they've had, last time I heard... Little Rock's was, one of the top, is one of the top 10 most dangerous cities in the is country. Is it really? Yep. Wow. For Just has one of the highest crime rates and violent crime, especially in North Little Rock. Yeah. Well, that, there's a difference between crime and violent crime, you know. So there's a shooting every night in North. I Little don't Rock. know that it did ranked at all, but it did say that violent crime rate was higher than the national rate in 2020. Well, the last time I heard this year, uh, or no, I'm sorry, last year, last year I think they had like 60 something uh, murders. 74 in 2023, the there second you go. most so, since 2010. So the last yeah. I heard was 60 something. Yeah, it's. Yeah, one of wow. the most violent. So they years got some more in before I. That's probably I check the stats again. More than El Paso. Yeah. Wow, that's El Paso is not really nice. Like I mean, literally, when you're driving and you look over there and you see Ciudad Juarez on your right, you're looking mm-hmm. and you're seeing the Rolex AD billboards and stuff on your left. Yeah, it's night and day. 
Okay. So one side of the border, the you other. would go. You'd want. To? I would like to go to El Paso. I'd like to. I mean, I I would. There's like, there was a website I found that was like 15 haunted places in El Paso. Oh really? So it's that'd be fun. Well to known to be like the plaza was a like a theater I think, mm-hmm. and a couple of houses, um, hotels or um, excuse me, hospitals, some hotels I believe too. Lots of stuff there. Not sure why. Not sure. I mean, maybe it's because the you know, old west. But yeah. you love Mexican food too. I oh, that's true. love Mexican. Food. He'll make so, San Antonio kind of look. Uh, would you? Would you drink Wee Beastie again? Yes, I would. <laughs> What'd I'm you still think? Drinking it, I like, I like it. it. I didn't. You explained this to me as being a peat monster. It is a peat monster, and it, it is peaty. I will give you that. I, but it was just like I thought. Oh my god, it's going to be like overwhelming, and I'm not even going to like. I mean, it there are something. stronger ones. It's like good. Brooke Lotta can make that up. What they make? Classic Laddie. No, no, they make a uh, what's it called? Oct- Octa something that's a super super high painted like it's also super super expensive. Oh yeah, well um, then I probably will never drink it. <laughs> the high school was said to be the scariest school in America. Really haunted? Ha- yeah, ghost stories throughout the years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So fire, there's a fire station there, a hotel. So I'd go. Cool. I've been. I mean, I, we didn't stop. We're driving through from California, but did you did you stop at the hospital and go check out any ghosties while you were there? No, but I would definitely go <laughs> and I would check it out and I would definitely eat a lot. Oh yeah, a lot of you have to eat a lot of good food. <laughs> All right, is that it. That's my wee story. That's your wee story. My wee story we with wee my wee beastie. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Remember when you're watching this on YouTube. Because you got to feed the the algorithm monster. Look right down there. And actually, I said it was right here. It's not. It's more like over there underneath you, John. Right right there. Can you see it? It's the subscribe button. The the subscribe. Oh, the subscribe. (laughs) It's usually right kind of more towards here. Yeah, it's right about there. Right around there. There's There's a subscribe button. Go ahead and punch that. And there's also a notification bell you can punch once it, the bell will pop up and you can choose how often or if you get notified, you can punch that too. We don't mind. It won't hurt our feelings at all if you do that. No, oh, but it hurt them even less if you hit that subscribe button. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that subscribe button. And I'm going to put like big subscribe banners all over. Maybe I'll put one over the top of your head. Me. Top of yours and me. <laughs> all right. Nighty night. Night, y'all. Night. Oh, this owl thing's creepy. Yeah, thanks for saving me on that one. I thought I put that in there and I meant to go look at it again. Seven foot tall. I mean, it's a moth. Mothman's. Lechusa. Lechusa. It's Lechusa.